This week's episode is coming to you from the National Centre of Circus Arts down in London. So I'm here at the National Centre for Circus Arts in London and uh, I've sneaked a peek into their library because uh, I'm having the chance to interview a few people here a little bit at a time. So uh, let's have a look around and see what's here. Well, this is the library at the National Centre for Circus Arts and it is the largest circus library in Europe. So in the library at the National Centre for Circus Arts we've got books on juggling, Chinese acrobatics, many, many books in French, as well as books on circus, there are also books on art theory and art and performance in general. We have a large section on dance and a large section on cultural theory. So the kind of textbooks that you would find in any university library if you were studying performance, cultural studies, feminist theory, modernist theory, postmodernism, and really trying to raise circus up to the level where it can be studied alongside disciplines like film and television. Hello, um, my name's Jack Horner. I graduated here nine years ago in 2006. Uh, swing trapeze was my discipline and my background's gymnastics. From the show, I've been invited uh, to come back and direct the first years in a, an ensemble piece. Usually we had links to link up all the solo acts. This show we've gone for something different and we've, uh, we've had uh, five minutes at the beginning and the end of the show to open and close uh, the sh showcase, the third years. Um, since 2006, gone around the world um, and worked all over the place. Japan was my first job at Universal Studios. I worked um, as circus captain on Batman Live World Tour. Went around Europe, South America, North America. Love Never Dies was the sequel to Phantom of the Opera. I was circus captain on that too, in the West End. And in 2013, I did Barnum the musical for Cameron McIntosh, also as the circus captain. Circus captain is very much like dance captain in a West End or Broadway show. You take on the responsibilities of the choreography and the safety aspects of circus in a show and the training program. So you come in warm up and you take the circus cast aside, do all the tricks, the pitches, the swing trapeze, anything in the show, what needs to be done. Um, you make sure it's safe and the performers are happy. Very good. The structure of the show is to showcase our third year students here at the National Centre. They have five minutes of whole to, to fill up and, and devise a piece, of their very own creation. They direct, they do the costumes, they pick the music, and they do all their own choreography as well on the show. So it's a lot of pressure, but fun also. So, assuming that this is the for, for these guys, this is like the culmination of three years of, uh, of intense training, I'm guessing. Absolutely, so. absolutely. It's all the hard work. Hi, um, I'm Laura Overton. Um, I'm a degree student. I'm in my third year and I'm studying swinging trapeze. Um, my piece is called The Lady in Red. Um, it's a comedic piece. It's about um, the stages of grief that you go through when you're feeling heartbreak or loss. Um, and it's fun, really fun to do. Um, this is the third year solos, um, so we've been devising this for the last six months. Um, it's kind of just a chance to show what we've been learning the last three years to all our friends and family and uh, agents and whoever wants to come and watch and in interested in circus. My name's Daniel Edwards, um, I do acrobatic juggling. I, I started life as a free runner and uh, I was doing that until I was like 10 years old and then I you know, started juggling and then I discovered uh, Circus Space as it was called back then and it's now called the National Centre of Circus Art. 
and then I did the foundation degree for two years, had a year out, um, worked as a stuntman in the West End and then came back and here I am. So in the show I do an act, um, well it's an acrobatic juggling act, it's just me, a box, a little table. Um, there's no really deep concept to it, it's just, you know, it's entertaining, that's the whole aim of it. Okay, um, so I came to the National Centre with a quite a well, highish level of acrobatics and um, I, I pretty much learned to juggle while I was here so I try and mix the two together like um, throw a ball up, backflip, put a ball between my feet, flick it up while I'm doing um, a flick. Yep, so my name's Craig Dagostino and I'm here doing Chinese pole. My act is... It, it, originally it was do, dealing with anxiety and depression, which is quite a deep subject. Um, but the more I went through, the more it became something else. So now it's kind of about never being able to attain something. It doesn't. It's not something specifically, it's about the idea that... Or something that I find I struggle with when learning things is... Um, I've always got the idea of the next thing I want to learn, and as soon as I get to it, it's like, well, I've got it. So, so what's the next thing? So it's about this constant battle with trying to find find your own self worth when you're learning things and f keep that sense of of achievement because it's very easy to lose that when you get into the habit of just learning learning new things and looking at it like that. So that's that's what it's about. So it's, it's an interesting process because you create something and then you show some people and they give you some feedback and something you will take it or not. And it's a very hard process when it's, so in third year there's you do presentations and you get feedback and you can also ask your peers. And, it's a very, very complicated process because you have to decide what you want to discard and what you want to keep and you get very precious about your material but then for me I had to learn to be less precious about it and so it's very it's very difficult and sometimes people see your intent which is great and then other people don't see so there's such a mix that at the end of the day you just have to trust what you want to do and what, what you believe about your stuff. Welcome to Circus Fitness, part of the podcast. I'm Seamus Clancy, and today I'll be teaching my guys the plank. Our plank position is useful for most circus skills and actually just in general day-to-day -day life. Um, it's going to help with our posture in almost everything that we do, and you can practice this at home. So our plank position, we're looking for as straight a body as we can make. Okay, so my hands sit just underneath my shoulders. Yeah, uh, my body is in as straight as line as I can make. So as you can see, my bum is slightly pushed up. Okay, I'm engaging my abdominals so that my belly button, I feel like I'm kind of sucking it into my, into my back. Happy with that? Wicked. Good, so Kay's doing this really nice thing where she uh, moves her shoulders back and forward, all right, just to push the stability in those shoulders. All right, just make sure that we don't lose this as we go forward, all right? Chris, this is a really nice position, all right? What I'd like you to do is just raise your head slightly. Okay, not too much, just to bring it in line with your back, all right? Okay. Um, so plank position, yeah, you can hold it for, there's, there's a number of different ways you can do it, yeah? We can either push it out and hold it as long as we can, all right, and go for the endurance, okay? We can do a little short burst as well, which will do a similar sort of effect. So we'll come up for six seconds, relax for six seconds, up for six seconds, and then it becomes more like reps. All right, and again, you wanna get 30 seconds in the position. All right, so if you do a minute, yeah, that's what, uh, 10 reps in total? Yes. Something like that. All right, you can make that easier as well if anyone's really struggling, is just to put your knees on the floor so you shorten the length of the lever. All right, um, and some people, if they carry wrist injuries, prefer to go on their elbows. Um, if you wanted to work more on the transverse, transverse abdominals, yeah, using a similar sort of style, we could make the maneuver more unstable. All right, so at the minute we've got our four points of contact on the floor, yeah? So I've got both feet, I've got both hands. So keeping my body level, I could take one hand up, yeah? And I could do the same on the other side. Make sense? So I then go into three points of contact. I'm still using my transverse abdominus. 
All right. Um, what you want to be careful of as you try that is as it comes up, we don't dip or open to get that balance. All right. So we're just trying to stay exactly as we were. Yeah. Try not to let the shoulders or the hips twist with that movement. All right, and we can do the same with our feet. So we can lift one leg up. Yeah, more there, kids. If you feel that you've done a really good plank at home, please send us pictures and videos to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our Twitter account. And now it's time for the Aerial Edge news from on high. I'm Vendetta Vane, and last weekend everyone had fun at our Easter intensive, so thank you everyone for coming along to that. Rehearsals have begun for our new show, Circus. It's going to be the first Aerial Edge performance ensemble show, involving both aerial circus and acrobatics. And hopefully some of the students are going to be seen in a whole new light. This Saturday we've got a handstand workshop coming up with Mr Craig Gadd from the National Centre for Circus Arts, where somebody else studied as well. <laughs> and he is a really fantastic hand balancer, currently in his third year. It's his first time up in Scotland teaching, so be sure to come along because he genuinely is world class. Check out the website for details. Seamus is going to be teaching a swinging trapeze workshop on the 19th of April. Places are limited, so get in there fast. We're delighted to announce that Aerial Edge have teamed up with Melanie Forbes Broom to bring you a six week block of dance acrobatics classes. They're gonna begin from Wednesday the 22nd of April and are bookable online. And now, in very serious news, our very own instructor, Mr. Sam McFarlane, has broken the world record for the most consecutive backflips. Sam has managed a whopping 27 consecutive backflips. If you think you can best him, then come to our acro class where you can try under his supervision. And as always, we have Aerial Edge hoodies, t-shirts, track pants, and onesies for sale at reception. To keep up to date, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And that was the Aerial Edge news from on high. I'm Vendetta Vane, over and out.